So if you've been following my channel for Retrobat, you'll notice that I've released a 3DS for Retrobat setup guide as well as Nintendo DS Retrobat setup guide and they both work really well. So I thought to myself, let's put the last four portables by Nintendo into one video and that's what I've done. So today I'm doing Game Boy OG or Game Boy 1989. Uh, we're next up doing the Virtual Boy, which is considered a portable, I suppose. Uh, we're next doing the Game Boy Color and then finally Game Boy Advance. So all of these are in chronological order from release date for each system. So as usual, I'll be going through the system settings, video settings, and also talking about file settings as I always do in my video. So check this one out. <laughs> Okay, so if you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe and also hit notifications so you don't miss upcoming content on Retrobat and several other front-end systems that I do on my channel. Okay, so we're doing the Game Boy series today. So Game Boy, Virtual Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance. And I had to add Virtual Boy in there because I suppose it's considered as more of a portable system by Nintendo. So I'm going to do these in chronological order of release date. So Game Boy 1989 followed by Virtual Boy in 1995, Game Boy Color in 96, and Game Boy Advance around 2000. So here we go. So we're going to start off with Game Boy OG today, that's Game Boy from 1989, the original uh, monochrome screen system. So as always, retro bat shortcut, open file location, and open up batch UI, system list. And I'm always going to say this during this process, but if you don't see what I see just here, which is a list of all the systems that Retrobat caters for, then take a look at my full setup guide for Retrobat. It's quite likely you've got some missing files and you've not installed something. So from here, I'm gonna look for GB, which is for Game Boy. Now under file extensions, it's going to accept .gb, .zip, and .7z, or 7z if you're in America, and that's of course 7zip. So we know what extensions we need for the original Game Boy. And as we can see, we've also got a few cores there, Libretro, RetroArch cores. So everything is good to go. And what we're going to do first then is go into our ROMs folder as always. And just drag this down until we come to GB, obviously meaning Game Boy. So open up GB and in my GB folder, which is Game Boy, I've got a really cool Batman game. Pretty basic, but I like this one. I've always been a big fan of this game. So that's now in place. And for the original 1989 Game Boy, you don't need BIOS or firmware files. So from here, I'm going to just open up Retrobat and get started. <laughs> Okie doke, so we're in Retrobat, and as we can see, we got Samus from Metroid displayed here, and yes, this is a woman. I think it took a lot of old scores a long time to realise that, but here's Game Boy, and we got our Batman, the video game, now in place, so as always, just scrape the artwork in the preview video. Now, you're going to notice with these systems that by default, we're going to have decorations, and you'll see what I mean in a minute, and some will say it looks really good, and some will say I'm not too keen on that, but I'm going to show you an alternative option today to get rid of those decorations, and also clean up pixelation, that type of thing. So scraping has been finished, so game settings, update game list, and really update game list, yes. And here we go, so looking super cool, Batman. So before I start this game with default settings, I'm going to just go to View Options by pressing Select. Go to the bottom to Advanced System Options Emulator, and here are the four Libretro RetroWatch cores. And we've also got a standalone emulator, which is MGBA. So I'm going to just leave this for Auto for this one. And as I say, leave everything for default, and we'll see how this game works. So let's start up this game. And if you find a BIOS missing window like I've just had up here, it'll be fine. You don't need BIOS files for original 1989 Game Boy games. So just press yes to that and your game is going to boot straight up.
as we can see there, the typical monochrome screen from the original Game Boy, that odd fluorescent green color with black. So let's look at the video settings on this. If I press select on my controller, video options, advanced system options, decorations, I'm gonna to choose to none. Game aspect ratio, in this case, I'm gonna actually use full. If you put this to 16 by nine, it will look far too stretched for its own good and it just will not look good at all. So integral scaling, I'm gonna to put to on. And what integral scaling does is slightly compresses the full screen and it kind of compacts it. So it's a little bit more consistent uh, rather than being so stretched as it were. So next up, we're gonna to go to vertical sync and just put this one onto yes. And under visual rendering, we got smooth games. So for those out there which don't like so much pixelation, then I advise you to turn this one on. And under palette just here, we got different colors for our original Game Boy games. So if you leave this one to auto, it's going to pick up DMG. And of course, DMG was the original Game Boy model known as uh, DMG. Uh, we also got different colors there, like I was saying. So the Game Boy Pocket color is going to be a little bit more bright and just a bit more whiter, which I was never a big fan of the Game Boy Pocket, to be fair. But you've got lots of different color options here if you want to choose those. I'm going to leave this to auto. And under colorization, we can add further colors to this. So perhaps the colors of the Super Game Boy. And if you're not sure what the Super Game Boy was, it was attachment for the Super Nintendo. It was a cartridge and you'd put your original Game Boy inside that cartridge and slot it into the Super NES. And uh, you can play Game Boy games on your Super Nintendo. So uh, obviously each one of these colorization options have different color palettes to them at all. I'm going to just put auto on this. And lastly, if I just go back to shader set, uh, you'll find that some of these shader sets just here, uh, which I normally use in my setup videos, they enhance things. But a few what are tested out on the original Game Boy, they make our games look very odd and uh, literally takes away all the color and almost looks unplayable. So for this option, I would seriously recommend going to auto. Uh, if you should try out one of the other ones, uh, then like I say, it's quite likely you're gonna have a really bad picture. So just be aware of that. And let's open up Batman. <laughs> So as we can see, we now got a full screen and it looks pretty good. But before I end the original Game Boy segment of this video, I'm going to just quickly show you under advanced system options. What I'm going to do this time is just add a different color to it. So if I go to palette, I'm going to change the palette to say Game Boy color and I'm going to select orange. Let's just see what this looks like. So as we can see, it looks a bit more colorful. So anyway, that's it for my 1989 Game Boy part of this setup guide. I'm now gonna move on to the Virtual Boy. Okay, so next up we have got the Nintendo Virtual Boy. So this one released in 1995, and it was quite likely Nintendo's biggest flopper system. 
So a lot of people didn't own one of these and some lucky people such as myself actually does own one of these. And they're superb systems, although they do give your neck a headache and uh, causes some eye problems for some people using them. So what we're going to do once again is go to Retro Bat Shortcut, Open File Location and Bat GUI system list and right at the bottom we're going to find virtual boy and there we go so virtual boy and we got a selection of extensions uh how your games can end so we got dot vb dot vboy dot bin and that should be accompanied by a dot q file as well and we got dot zip and dot seven zip or dot seven or z zip okay so we know what we're doing and we've only got one core on this one through retrobat to secure to support virtual boy and that's metafen vb so let's back out of here out of here and we're going to go back into the roms folder and right at the bottom we're going to find virtual boy somewhere and here we go so within my folder just here i've got a virtual boy game which is a japanese copy and to be fair most games if not all of them were japanese the virtual boy seen very little light in the uh, in Britain or in America, it's pretty much predominantly a Japanese system. Like I said, it's a big failure, so there wasn't really much exposure on it. So we're going to drag this one into the Virtual Boy folder. And here we go. So we can now open up RetroBat again. <laughs> Okay, so we're back into Retrobat again, and we have the awesome Virtual Boy logo accompanied with a bit of Mario Tennis. So let's open this up. And for those of you who's not sure what Virtual Boy is, this is it. You look into it, and it would have been almost 3D, nothing compared with today's 3D, but it was 3D for the time, and it didn't look too bad, although it can make your eyes go a bit funny sometimes. So again, I'm going to launch this with settings, which are default. No BIOS file required for Virtual Boy. So there we go, Virtual Boy Wario Land. So if you was uh, brought up with the Game Boy Wario Lands, then undoubtedly you will like the Virtual Boy Wario Lands game. It's very good. Uh, so let's look at the video sets for this. So first thing, I'm going to actually get some artwork for this. So main menu, scraper, and scrape now. And the cases the Virtual Boy games were in, almost a bit like Nintendo DS cases, I suppose, pretty small. And uh, the cartridges themselves, they weren't that big. I think it was a really unfortunate system. I think it could have become some if the technology was a bit more ahead of itself. But I think it was released at a really odd time. And I think that was part of the problem. We also had PlayStation releasing in the background. And I think most kids wanted that at the time. 
So game settings, update game list, yes, and here we have it. So let's look at the video settings on this. View options, advanced system options, shader set. I'm going to put this one to auto for this one. And decorations, I'm going to take away that headpiece just there, or rather the eyepiece. Go to none. Game aspect ratio, again for this one, I'm going to choose four. Integer scaling, turn to on. Vertical sync, yes, because we've got some 3D games in Virtual Boy and we never want screen terrors, no good at all. So, so if we scroll down a bit further, we got visual rendering and I'm going to turn this one to on. That's going to, again, slightly compress our full picture, but it's all for the better. So let's leave that one on and let's boot up Wario Land again. Let's see how this looks about the eyepiece in place. And unfortunately, there's no color options for this one. So you will have to put up with a red in black, but it's better than looking for the eyepiece itself. So So as we can see from that, a lot better picture as far as I'm concerned. I think it looks good with the F-piece in place anyways. So that's it for Virtual Boy. Next up, I'm going in for the kill with Game Boy Color. So let's exit out of here. And so we're talking Game Boy Color. So this one was released around 1996. And there's a few different models or rather colors of the actual cases themselves for the Game Boy Color. I had mine with Mario Deluxe at the time. That was a really cool package, which a really cool shop in Bristol named Game Station sold me at the time. And uh, yeah, I was quite happy with my Game Boy Color. Uh, I had the turquoise color of that, I think. So let's go to Retrobat again, open file location and back GUI, system list. And I think you know the score by now. We're just going to go down and look for GBC, Game Boy Color. So here we have it, .gbc, .zip, .7zip. And we have got two Libretro Retro Arch Chorus here. So that's what we need. And just remember, if you don't see any of this information, then there's a good chance you need to install a couple of additional packages to make Retrobat see them. So let's back out of here. And again, ROMs, and we're going to look for GBC this time, which is just here. So let's open that up. In my GBC folder, we have got Super Mario Deluxe. So let's drag this one in and open up Retrobat. <laughs> And so here we have it, Game Boy Color. So let's have a look. Uh, obviously, this time I'm going to remember to get my artwork first. So main menu, scraper, and scraper settings. Everything looks good just there. So just be aware, if you're new to scraping, uh, you do have different options you can use. So image source, you can either choose a box 2D image or a box 3D image. And you know what? If it's missing some artwork, then fan art is always worth selecting. Uh, there's going to be alternative artwork. So let's choose fan art for this one for a change. And I'm going to back out and scrape now. And update game list. So yes. 
And here we go. This is uh, Fanor, apparently. So let's just take a look for a second. View options, advanced system options, emulator. So again, the MGBA emulator is also going to support this one. So I'll be using that one in a minute with my next portable system by Nintendo. So for this, I'm going to be using Auto again, which is going to automatically uh, pick up Libretro Gambate. So Auto, and let's run by default. And again, just ignore this and press yes. So I played the original Super Mario Brothers probably more times than most people have had hot dinners. Uh, at the time, it would have been a big deal, and it was a big deal to play the original uh, Super Mario 1985 game on a Game Boy. It was pretty spectacular at the time, but nowadays, we don't really think much of it. So anyway, let's go to view options and system options. Uh, for a shader set, what I'm going to do is leave this one to auto, because just like the 1989 Game Boy, uh, I covered a couple of segments back. It's going to give you a really bad image. So I'm going to leave this one to auto. Decorations, I'm going to put to none. And just remember, if you're planning on using a full screen through aspect ratio or a 16 by 9 ratio, then always disable decorations. Otherwise, most of your gameplay will be missing. So let's look at uh, game aspect ratio. And again, I'm going to use full on this one. Uh, again, 16 by 9, it will stretch it just a little bit too much. Integer scaling to on. Vertical sync, I'm going to put to yes. Visual rendering, we've got some more options here, just like the previous portable, which I just covered. And we're going to go for on for bilinear filtering, because that's going to compress the image and just make it a little bit better, not so big. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a minute. Uh, palette, we've got a range of different colors just here to use, just like on the OG 1989 Game Boy. But I'm going to just stick to auto on this because we are using a Game Boy Color and they're already colored. Let's open up Game Boy Color again. So as we can see, nice vivid color just there for full screen for Game Boy Color. But as we know, this is uh, pretty much a port of the original 1985 game. And you're probably better off playing the NES version of this or a Famicom version if you're in North America. So that's Game Boy Color done. And finally today, I'm going to be looking at the Game Boy Advance. So let's quit out of here. So again, system list and system and GBA, this one's going to be listed as GBA. And we're going to be it, and it's going to be accepting .gba, .zip, and .7zip. 
And like I said a minute ago, it's also going to be using the emulator or core, uh, which is MGBA. And that's the one we're going to be using. So I'm going to go to my GBA folder for Game Boy Advance. And I got two files in Game Boy Advance. So we do need a BIOS file for this one. I find games don't run at all. And we've also got the game here, which is in a .gba extension. So what I'm going to do from here is just drag and drop these files into the right places in Retrobat. So shortcut, open file location, and this time round we're going to go to BIOS first. Now in BIOS you can just drag your GBA underscore BIOS dot bin loosely. You don't need to place this one into any dedicated folder as we see just here for different systems. Just leave that one as it is. And what I'm going to do next is open up file location again and go to ROMs. And this time I'm going to look for GBA. GBA, and I'm going to just drag and drop this one inside of this ROMs GBA folder. And again, we are good to go. So let's open up Retrobat. And here we go. So finally, we are at Game Boy Advance, a very cool 32-bit portable system, which originally, to be honest, wasn't that great. The screen wasn't that great. If you were in a slight bit of shade, you couldn't see anything at all. Up until the Game Boy Advance SP came out, and that really was a system. That was a cool screen. And uh, it was a flip screen, so uh, they're worth checking out if you uh, want to buy a Game Boy Advance. Go for the SP model. So what we're going to do is grab some more artwork, so Scraper, and what I'm going to do is change the fan art back to, I'm going to go for Mix version 1 this time, just to spice things up, back, and Scrape now. And just like the other portables, we're of course going to have a default decoration, which is going to be that indigo purple casing for the Game Boy Advance. And scrape and finish, so let's game settings, update game lists, and really update game lists. And here we go, Sonic Advance, great game. And when I originally bought my uh, Game Boy Advance in WH Smiths in a little place called Kingswood years ago, I actually bought it with this game, and Final Fight 1 also came with it. I was very chuffed that day, very chuffed. I was about uh, 17 or 18 at the time. So, uh, like I said, we're going to use a specific emulator, or rather core on this one, and I'm going to be using this MGBA. So let's select that one. The rest is going to be left to default. And you're again, you're going to get a warning for this. It gets a bit irritating, but just bypass this and press yes. And like I said, it's an emulator. Some people still refer to these as courses as in Retrobat, but we do need to install this one, and it's a good one to install. So let's press yes. <laughs> So as we can see, that's running really well with that. Now, some people might have issues with the controller uh, using the MBGA. So let's just switch over to Advanced System Options. And again, I'm going to use the Libretro Core Up MGBA. So let's just choose Auto on this, back out, and open up again, and bypass that BIOS screen, and press Yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
And there we go. That's your problem fixed if a uh, regular MGBA message or controller is around. So let's have a look at the video options and advanced system options. Shader set. I'm going to just leave this to auto because this we know on these portable systems. By applied in shaders, we do get some very odd effects and the games almost become unreadable. We can't really see what's going on. Decorations. I'm going to, I'm going to go to none. Game aspect ratio, again, I'm going to try 16 by 9 on this one. Integral scaling, yes, just to compress that image we see just a touch, so it just gives us a better picture. Vertical sync, yes, definitely on Game Boy Advance, as there were several 3D games on it. Now, if we go to video, and the ones I'm looking at is CR screen output. So we got a mixture of different speeds just here for the CRT screen. So experiment with those, but generally just leaving this on auto is fine. And under CRT screen resolution, this is obviously going to give you the quality which a old school CRT VTV would give you. So I'm going to go for dynamic on this one. It should give us a bit of a boost in the colors. Visual rendering, smooth games, I'm going to turn to on again. Now, if you're a big geek like myself with these things, there's another one I recommend checking out. And this is under visual rendering, color correction. And I'm going to turn this one to on. And as it says, it adjusts output colors to mimic the original console screen. And as you've seen just a minute ago, we had the BIOS boot. So we've seen that Game Boy Advance logo come up before the game kicked in. If we go to emulation... Skip BIOS, and I'm going to choose yes. So let's back out and boot up Game Boy Advance's Sonic Advance again. So, perfecto. You know what? I'm still finding it strange how Sonic appears on Nintendo systems. So, that's it for my quad setup guide today. So, in this, I've showed you the original Game Boy from 1989, the Virtual Boy from 1995, and the Game Boy Color from 96, and also the really awesome Game Boy Advance. So, if you like this video, what you've seen today, check out my other Retro Bat setup guides i've got plenty uh in my dedicated retro bat playlist and also be sure to subscribe and hit notifications i'm always uploading emulation related content and check me out on social media i'm on facebook twitter tiktok and instagram but like i always say stay retro <laughs>